Uh, this week we're actually wrapping up uh, this series, uh, Giving Back to God. And uh, we kicked off the series, acknowledging, uh, really, we just started it. God wants it all. Um, and uh, the next week we moved into uh, the fact that God wants your time. And uh, we explored uh, that God also wants our talents, uh, that these gifts that we have, they're from God, they're gifts from God. They're supposed to be used for God's purposes. And this week we're going to wrap up this series by talking about He wants your treasure. And that's going to be our focus. And quite simply, here's what we want you to know. We're called to acknowledge and honor God as the source from which, uh, from which we all uh, have. Uh, and that everything that we have, that's where it originates. Giving God first priority uh, when it comes to our money is a clear demonstration of our love and commitment to Him. Um, would you pray with me? God, sometimes this can be a, a sensitive subject, a tough one to talk about. Lord, we ask that you would just be with us, or just give us peace as we look at your word, as we share from one another um, in terms of life, and just how you move in our lives when we live this life, when we recognize what we have comes from you. Lord, we pray that we would not be filled with apprehension and fear, but rather a great anticipation and joy of what you're going to do as we seek to live lives where we recognize all that we have comes from you. We pray this for your son, baby. Amen. Now this morning, you heard Pastor Bryce uh, read this passage from Proverbs, Honor the Lord with wealth, uh, with the first fruits of your cross, then your barns will be filled overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new, new wine. There's another translation of that verse um, that goes like this, Honor the Lord with your wealth, and with the best part of everything you produce, Jews. Then you will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. How many of you have had your barns just fill up with grain? Huh? You know what I'm talking about? You just go out there and your barn is full. Right? Well, let me just help you a little bit. This is obviously written to a, a little bit of a different society, a, an agrarian society. Um, you know, so while the original hearers of this verse uh, were folks who live the farming lifestyle, the agrarian lifestyle, there's still this universal truth that comes to us as it relates to God's promise and what he's going to provide for us. And it's very simple this. When we give God priority with what we have, and in particular with our money, God is faithful. And he will do what he says he will do every time. And I'm going to be really honest about this subject. This is a tough subject. We're talking about we're talking about our stuff in particular. We're talking about money. And frankly, and I don't mean to be insensitive here, but a lot of times we feel like there's never enough money in the first place to go around, right? I mean that's that's a reality that we, we deal with in our lives. And I also recognize that there are frequently voiced questions when it comes to this issue. And they include the following. One of the things I think people often ask is, why does the church talk about money so much? Or, why don't they talk about money enough? Another question is, what does the word tithe? What's that word mean? I hear that word. What's it mean? Or, another question is, why should we give to the church? And then one that I think is a really good question, and fourth right, is can I trust the church with my money? That's a fair question. And one of the things I think is critically important for us to hear is that there are stories, even in our midst as a church family, for people who have experience in doing what they can and are choosing to walk in faith when it comes to God's expectations with regard to their money, their treasure. And so, what I thought would be good 
what I thought would be helpful to our church family was to have a conversation with one of our church family members for the remainder of our time uh, together. And so I want to ask Dave Millard, where are you, Dave? I'm going to ask Dave Millard to come this morning. Some time ago, when I mentioned this particular topic would be part of an upcoming series in the new year, uh, Dave graciously volunteered just to share a little bit of his story, their story. And I just want to do this in a little bit of an interview format. So, Dave, let's grab these chairs right here. So, okay. pull those forward. So, just so you know, uh, yeah, this is this is pre-planned. It was I'm not calling Dave up the last minute or this morning. We we talked about this a little bit. So, and you know how much I stick to the script. So, so just so you know, all right. But first of all, I just want to ask you, Dave, tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, for some people, I know a lot of people really do know you and they love you, but maybe there's some others who need to know a little bit more about your story. I know you have a really tenured connection to the church, right? So you heard 100 years? That's not me. I haven't been here. I have not been here 100 years. Thank the Lord. Um, but my, uh, my background, my family's background um, does uh, go back um, quite a bit in Free Methodist. My, uh, my grandparents on my mom's side I'm sorry, my grandparents, my dad's side, are from Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania, attended a small free Methodist church there. My um, grandparents on my mom's side um, were actually involved in this church when it was um, back at Marshall. Okay. And they were part of the, the team that um, moved from there to here. Um, um, so um, as a free Methodist, I was born in this church, um, came as an infant, um, but that doesn't make... Um, that doesn't mean I was grandfathered into membership. Um, you know, I, had, I went through membership uh, as a teen to become a member. Um, my wife and I um, met in this church. Um, there, was some, there is a story about something about in kindergarten, but it didn't happen in kindergarten. Um, so it was later on in our teens years that we, we met here. Um, I can actually say that I am Elsa Tenney's favorite grandson, or favorite son-in-law, excuse me, um, but if you don't know, she only has one, so it makes it a lot easier for me. Um, and so um, um, we were married in this church. Our, um, our daughters were married in this church, um, and we're very happy um, to be here and be a part of the church. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Dave. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we talked about this a little bit beforehand, mm -hmm. and with that in mind, I just want to follow up and kind of follow through on those questions. So... Here's my first question. What is your earliest memory of tithing or, you know, giving back to God? Um, and why does that particular memory kind of stand out for you? So, as I said, I was here um, as a very young child. In fact, well, getting back to, before the Parsons was there on the corner, my family used to live in the house that was here pri previous to that. So, um, but I never, I never actually um, came a lot, of, you know, as families you know, come and go, and um, my family didn't originally come a lot uh, when I was young. Um, I was brought by a family um, many of you might know as the newcomers. They weren't newcomers to the church. That was their actually name, their actual name. Um, but m my earliest member of tithing um, was when I was in um, elementary Sunday school, and every, every, every Sunday morning, we brought in <clears throat> our money to, um, for child care, just like we have, like you might have a child care person that you support um, uh, in your home. Well, I used to, we used to bring money in from, uh, as our own money and put it in a jar. And then there was young, a young man at that time named Glenn White who would come in and match every penny that we would put in there every week. And it was, it was so much fun because we just wanted to put him over the top, you know. And so we all put our money in that jar, and then as uh, and then then our teacher and I don't remember who the teacher was. She'd take it out and she'd count it all, and then he'd come in and dig deep in his pockets, and he had to be prepared to meet, match whatever we had. And it was always a thrill to see him sweat it out and see if he had enough money. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so tell me a little bit then what your understanding is of, of that word that I mentioned a little bit earlier, this, the word tithe. What's your understanding of that? Oh, well, so, um, you know, tithing is, a, as Rob said, a hard thing. 
Um, and we all come to a realization of what that is for each and each individual. Um, my understanding and our family's understanding as we came to that understanding that is 10 percent and 10 percent of our growth yeah and that's a really comes from the old testament mm -hmm. uh teaching um from the, the law mm -hmm. which uh kind of lays out uh, that expectation of the people of mm -hmm. israel to give back to god mm -hmm. this 10 percent of what they own and it was supposed to be the first fruits the, the from the very uh from the very top it's what you start with it's not after you pay your bills yeah. right yeah it's that's just just you do it from the very beginning so yeah so my question then is, how has tithing, this idea of regularly giving back to God, how has it helped you trust God? Well, so it is important. I, I think it is important to understand and think about, oh, out of all my money, I want to give that 10% to the Lord first because something always comes up. Something ever, always presents itself. Um, you know, and we all have been there when there's much more month left at the end of the money. Um, and so, um, obviously, in that situation, we all have learned to trust the Lord with, with what happens. And, and He is faithful. Um, but it, it isn't an easy thing. And we all come to that situation in different times in our life, in different places, and in different situations. You're right. It's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, and the situations change, right? Mm -hmm. But... What do you think you're, you're saying to God? What, is, what, what are you saying to God when you're obedient, when, when you're obedient and giving back to him? What are you actually saying to him? Well, just like everything, we have to trust the Lord with everything. I mean, that's what we're saying to the Lord. Lord, I trust you in all I have as I support my family, as I um, you know, want to do things for other people. And as we meet our obligations, um, and what we make our decisions on our obligations, we want, we want to be able, we want to trust the Lord, and He He is supportive. He is the one that's faithful to us. He is faithful. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. So, then, we've talked about this. So specifically, we know we should, we know we're supposed to give, we're, mm -hmm. we're called to give, we're invited. Actually, we're we're encouraged. This is um, something that God wants us to do. Um, yeah, it's a command, it's I a command, feel like. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a clear expectation mm -hmm. of what it means to live for God. Mm -hmm. So, um, but why should we give it to, to church? I mean, what, mm -hmm. it's one thing to say we're giving to God, but specifically mm -hmm. in the context of church. Yeah, so um, I think it comes down to um, what your definition of church is mm -hmm. and what you think church is. My, my feelings, our feelings, is our local church. I mean, there are all, all, all kinds of opportunities in, under the terms church to give your money, um, to put in God's hands. Um, and, there's, um, and there's plenty of opportunities to do what you like to do with your money in the name of the Lord. But in our feelings, in what we feel our tithe goes is to our local church. Yeah, that's your, a conviction that you have come under as, yes. as you walk in uh, yes. your life with Jesus. Yes, thank the you. The local church. Yes, is, here. Uh, where? Here. Where you give. Yes. So, I want to give you a real-time example, okay? You, you mentioned it a little bit earlier. You talked about more money left at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. I mean, more month left at the end of the money uh -huh. than money, right? Yeah. So, share about a time when things were tight, maybe, um, but you remain consistent in trying to give and giving back to God. How, how did that impact your life? Well, so... Um, you know, everybody's story is different. Everybody has different stories. Um, I can honestly say that um, maybe my stories, you know, are a little low key. I mean, I've heard many stories from Adele um, in her life um, and how the Lord has supported her. I've heard many stories from Anita, how he's supported her as a single mother and what he's done for her to, to encourage her to take care of her as she was faithful with her tithe. Um, as a young family, we didn't always tithe, you know. Um, it comes to a, we come to a different uh, realization in our time, in our life, when, um, when um, we think we should start tithing. It's good to have a good wife. My wife, um, at one point, um, 
in our early life with three children, prayed that um, maybe our husband would see see the light and think about praying or about tithing. And over a course of time, not right away, um, the Lord convicted me that we should um, start tithing. And, and of course, I thought, oh, well, this is a great idea. We should tithe in that, which means just what I get every week, not what the government takes out and everything. And my wife uh, um, was happy to hear that. Um, and uh, then she thought, well, maybe I should pray that we should uh, tithe gross. And the Lord convicted me much faster. Um, um, that that uh, surprised her a little bit. So now you say tithe net, tithe net or tithe gross. So again, when you said you felt like the Lord was talking about tithe gross, that was first thing we do when the money hits the, I know yeah. what I'm getting. Yeah. First thing I do, I operate off the number I know that I'm getting, period. Yeah, so, so I mean, I can't say that, oh, right away we jumped in. Sure. We, may, we might have worked our way into that, um, but we agreed together that that's where we should go. Um, and so um, three, three daughters, um, uh, a mortgage, a car, um, and just trying to get kids through um, um, life. Um, I can't tell you a specific incident. Like I said, um, I, I don't have the stories that uh, I've heard and whatever, but I know that the Lord has met our our needs. So um, just in general terms, three daughters, um, all through um, school, um, some through um, not um, public school, but private school, three daughters through college that we paid for. Sometimes there were second jobs. Sometimes there were other things that we did. Three marriages. Oh, boy. Um, um, weddings. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's right. That's that's what I meant. Yeah, yes, yes. I knew it. I knew it. Yes, and then, um, and then uh, um, four four of colleges. We um, I'm sorry. I should, so my um, two older daughters went through college, and then when my youngest daughter went to college, my wife went back to college. So, but but the Lord has blessed us um, in in this way, in that we were able to do that. Um, and so now our our mortgage is paid off. Our our daughters, um, you know, are married and uh, out of the house, which makes things a lot different you now, you know, that, oh, there's money, you know, but, but um, the Lord has been very faithful and we, we are very thankful for that. So, yeah. You know, thank you, Dave mm -hmm. um, and Sharon. Yes. Yes. Thank you to my wife as well. This, it's just really encouraging to be able to hear from people in our own midst who are doing what they can to walk in faith, mm -hmm. to trust God. Yes. Uh, to, be God mm -hmm. as we live our lives in the way that he's called us to mm -hmm. live. So I thank you for sharing your oh, story this my morning. Pleasure. With my everyone. pleasure.